Good morning, everybody. Today is Tuesday, September 26th. Uh, this is a review for Lesson 2.2, which is Modeling a Geologic Process. Uh, just a reminder, we're still looking at the objective. How do scientists use models to test their hypotheses? Um, at the beginning of 2.2, today in class, I asked the kids to go ahead and work on this warm-up activity. This is the first time I've asked you to work on a warm-up activity in Amplify, and it's something that I'm going to be asking you to do now for uh, the rest of the semester, or the rest of the year, actually. So you'll come in, and your bell ringer will tell you what lesson we're on, and then it'll say, go ahead and do the warm-up, which is activity number one. So in this warm-up, it's asking which question would a scientist most likely be I'm sorry, which question would a scientist be most likely to use a model to answer? And if you remember yesterday, we were talking about models. We were talking about how scientists can use models to test their ideas and to get evidence. That's key concept number three. Um, so if we're looking at these different options, question number one, how was this lake formed? This is a really good question to use a model because it's not something that we can easily access information. We can't go back in time and look to see how the, the lake was formed. Um, the second question, how, what is the temperature of the lake? That's easy to find out. We just get a thermometer and we figure it out. And the same with the last one, what is a rock at the bottom of this lake made of? You can compare that to known samples and find out what type of rock that is really easily. So question number one is the best question that a scientist would be most likely to use a model to answer. Um, I said we were going to take a look at this investigation question, how do models help scientists answer questions? Uh, we talked real briefly about the article that we, I had you guys read yesterday in class. So Gary was the scientist from the article. He wanted to know how the novae on Venus were formed. And so we're going to look a little bit more closely at how Gary gathered evidence to help, help answer his question. I reminded the kids of the definition of model. A model is an object diagram or computer program that helps us understand something by making it simpler or easier to see. Um, a model could be an object, like a physical object. Today in class we had a physical model um, to help us with our understanding of um, landforms and how they're created. Um, but an, an object can be a globe. It can be um, like a plastic diagram of something like my brain that I had in, and that I was using in class. A diagram would be a picture, would be um, maybe a graphic that's in a, in a textbooks, textbook or um, used in Amplify. Um, a lot of times this, this year when you're with me, I'm going to ask you to draw a diagram of your understanding, and so that would be a model. Or the computer programs, our computer simulations that we use in Amplify, those are really great models. So a hypothesis is anything that a scientist or a geologist or uh, somebody who, who has a, an educated guess. It's a thought that they have. It's an idea that they have. And Gary thought that the higher surface temperature and thinner crust might have caused the no to form, and he wanted to test this. So how did the model answer Gary's question, how was the no formed? So I had the kids look on the second page of the article, and the very first image that's there shows this diagram. So this diagram is an example of a model. And we read the passage underneath that, the caption, and it said that magma uh, came up to Venus's uh, very thin crust. This was in the model. Um, and it broke the surface of that crust and created those cracks. So Gary has set up his model based on his ideas because he knew before he ran it if the results of his models matched the novae on Venus then he could be a little bit more confident about his ideas. And in fact what happened was the shapes that were similar to the novae formed in Gary's model. So the image on the left is from his computer simulation and the image on the right is an actual novae that's found on Venus. And so that provided evidence that his ideas were accurate. We would say that his hypothesis was supported. So our key concept again, scientists can use models to test their ideas and get evidence. 
So that leads us into what we're doing. Um, by the way, this article that you read, uh, I'm going to have you go ahead and put that in your science folder because this has actually, it has evidence that we're going to be able to use on our um, on our final claim, on your scientific claim, when we're trying to figure out what caused the channel on Mars to form. Um, okay, so Geria wanted evidence about the geologic process that formed Nove on Venus, and we have a similar question. We want to know about the geologic process that formed the channel on Mars. So today we're going to use a model to get evidence about whether water could have formed the channel. We're going to use a physical model to help test the following. Here's the hypothesis. This is what we're thinking. This is our idea. A hypothesis has to be a claim, by the way. It has to be a statement. It cannot be a question because you have to say, this is what I think, not, hmm, what do you think? Can you hear the difference? It has to be able to be either supported or not supported. And if you just have a question or a really vague idea that doesn't really make a claim, it's really hard to support or deny that. So our hypothesis today is that landforms remain after the flowing water that formed them stops flowing. In other words, if a geologic process like flowing water if that forms a landform through erosion, if that water stops flowing, let's say it dries up, it evaporates, it goes a different direction. You know how sometimes um, rivers will bend or you know maybe it, it just it's not there anymore. The liquid water is not there anymore. We're making a claim that the landform that it created will still stay there even though the liquid water is not there. Okay, so we're making a hypothesis. This is our model that we use today, and I'm going to show you a video of it here in a second. So the flowing water model is a simple system, and it includes water and sand. Remember the word system? The definition of system is it is a, a, a bunch of parts that make up a complex whole. So I want to talk to you about the different parts real quick. I've got a bucket full of water. And inside that bucket of water, I also have some tubing, some rubber tubing. And I've got that tubing secured at the bottom so it's not going to come out. I also have a tray full of, wa uh, full of sand. And at the very end of the tray, there's a hole. So um, I'm going to pour water down the table. And you're going to observe what happens to the sand. And the water itself is going to drain out the hole. So we're just looking to see what happens to the sand. So um, a model is really useful to test our ideas, but it's not perfect. Um, there's always going to be something that may not be exactly perfect about a model. Um, it represents the real world that we live in, but it's not the geologic process itself. So, for example, the, the water in the bucket really does represent flowing water on the geosphere. The sand represents the geosphere, but the sand is soft. It's flexible, whereas the geosphere also includes hard, solid rock. Okay, So there's some limitations with our model, but it's really good for us to get an idea of uh, taking a look at a geologic process that would normally take many, many hundreds of years. We can kind of speed up and see what would happen in just a couple minutes. Um, okay, so we talked about the parts of the model, and we, I asked the kids what they thought, if they thought the hypothesis would show that the landforms would remain, or if they thought that they would show that the landforms, when the water stopped flowing, the landforms just kind of collapsed back into the sand. Um, and I'll let you kind of think about that. There's a paper inside this folder, and this is your lab sheet. Uh, I gave the kids hard copies, and they were yellow, blue, and green, just because that's what came out of the copier. And I want you to fill this out as well. Okay, I want to review the directions. So on page number one, you're going to see it says stream table observations number one. And it says during the flowing water demonstration, observe the stream table while water is flowing through it. I want you to circle the word during for number one. Circle that word during. I want you to really pay attention to what is happening while the water is flowing. 
notice the little particles of sand. Notice what's happening to the, to the sand tray as a whole. Uh, there's a word bank there, and that word bank should look familiar to you. It's the same word bank that we used when we were describing the aerial photography um, taken of Earth surrounding landmarks that were formed by flowing water and flowing lava. So use those words to describe what happens when water is flowing through the sand. And then on the back page, number two, it says in the stream table diagram below, draw what you see in the stream table and underline this once the water has stopped flowing through it. Um, make sure you draw any landforms that the flowing water formed. And remember, you're looking at the stream table from above. So this is a bird's eye view. Acclimate yourself to the diagram here. So the water bucket and the tubing is on the left and the stream table itself is towards the right with the hole where the water goes out on the very right. So make sure that when you're drawing what remained after the water stopped flowing, that that's kind of how you're looking at it. And then lastly, I want you to record your observations about the landform that the flowing water formed. Record your observations about the landform. And you can go back and use those same words that you found in your word bank on page one, okay? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and show you a video, maybe. I am going to show you a video. Let me go to YouTube real quick. And I'm going to go to my videos. And I'm going to actually turn the sound way down. I'm going to talk over this, okay? Okay, so you'll see that the water's coming out of the tubing, and hopefully you can see right away, see how that has created a landform. We would use words like branching, and it actually does merge down below. And I'm hoping that she gets a, a close-up I want you to see if you can notice the individual grains of sand moving with the water. Uh, take a look down in the, yeah, I think she's going to zoom in right here. Look down at the bottom right side where I'm pointing right there. You can see the different grains of sand actually being moved by the water. And then actually sometimes they're deposited. So when they're moving, that's called um, erosion. And they're being deposited there at the very bottom right corner. And so that actually was built up. It was almost coming out of the tray. That's called deposition. Okay, so I'm going to come back here real quick. Oh boy, that is not at all what I wanted. Sorry about that. That's hilarious. And there are my, okay, well, I guess we're done. Uh, go back and just rewind my picture. <laughs> I've lost my stuff. I don't know where I'm at. Um, go back and um, ha just stop the frame where the, the, at the end of that video, and you can use that to draw. Let me know if you have any questions. Keep this paper. You're going to use it. Uh, we have a part two to this hands-on activity that we're going to do on Thursday. And then just a reminder, tomorrow, Wednesday, is your vocabulary and key concept test. Uh, I have a meeting at ESU 3, so I will be gone, and your sub will give you your test. All right, study hard, and I will see you on Tuesday or Thursday.